All right, don't watch this video because you're not going to learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to open with that. <laughs> Are you recording? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, welcome to Weld.com. Hope everyone's staying safe and staying healthy. Uh, last Friday we put out a 1G with a backer 316 stainless. People have been asking about doing vertical stainless 3G. I could not find nothing on the internet about 3G short circuit vertical up. Today we're going to kind of give it a try and see if we could pass a bend test. So bear with me on this. I might look great and might not. So let's give it a go. First step is I'm going to be using a hard rock uh, Weiler pipeliner. So all we're going to do is remove the the oxide layer by one inch from the bevel side on both sides plates and flip the plates over and do the other side. Next we're going to be doing the backing strip. It's going to be a quarter inch backing strip and we're going to hit the top layer top of that and the sides of that. Then we're going to tack these together. I'm running by a 316 wide gap here uh, nice and consistent. Then first I usually put tacks on the front side but right on the edge of it not in my, on my root on the edge and also you want to make sure there's no uh, gap there and make sure your, your, uh, your opening is nice and consistent. Put a tack there, I flip it over, look at that middle again, make sure there's no gap if there is, put a clamp on it even if there's not. Then I run little tacks, about a half inch little weld on the ends, middles, about half inch or three quarters at the most, no more than three quarters. And that's it, then we're gonna throw her up in the stand. So let's talk about settings. This is what my settings were on Friday when we were doing flat. So we're gonna boost this up to 23. That's my volts. Then we're going to jump down at the wire feed speed 260. I notice when I'm running real high uh, wire feed speed, it wants to like just clump up, convex really bad. I mean, I tried to do a little Z-weave, uh, try to maneuver it, but it just crowns up. So I want the wire just kind of do a gobbler effect because I did a lot of flux core and I just want it to kind of just drop in there basically, not pile up big. So I'm running high voltage and low, uh, low wire feed speed, and we're within the amps on the uh, specs of the bowler wire, so we're good there. Again, we're running the bowler Avesta wire, ER316, 035 is the size. When we did the video last Friday, I noticed when I was running it, it laid really nice and flat. It ran really good. Hopefully, we could do the same thing running the vertical up. All right, you notice on the last video, I just used a fume extractor. I want to step it up a little bit and use a uh, respirator. Uh, the reason I'm being so safe is because CR6, that's very poisonous to your health when it goes into smoke form. So always be cautious. The first thing you're gonna notice is it's gonna sound like it's bad. Uh, like it's gonna throw a little bit of buckshot, but that's how only way I can get it from not convexing so bad in the middle. You wanna stay steady, I mean steady. Stainless don't give you no forgiveness. And I just kinda do a little baby move on the left and right. A little hesitation on my sides. Make sure I'm tying in good and getting good penetration on my side of my plates here. And you just basically just keep going, staying steady. You're gonna see, continue to keep seeing a little buckshot, but just keep going up, stay very consistent. That's the main thing. And uh, try to keep your head out of that plume. And I'm keeping about a quarter inch arc length. I try to go about a zero degrees end, maybe five to 10 degrees push. Uh, but I'm trying to keep consistent. You wanna not move, that's your main goal, because it will definitely show your, all your little movements that you messed up on. And just run all the way up and that's it. All right, so I already wire brushed it. You're gonna see color, it's gonna be kind of dark, uh, have maybe some gray, but there's gonna be no sugaring. So I wire brushed it real quick, it's all silver. Uh, looks like I got pretty good tie in here. I'm convex right here in the middle, but I noticed with stainless, it's always kind of convex in the middle. It's hard to get rid of. So uh, everything looks tied in. Uh, we're gonna take a little grinder and just kind of grind the sides right here and uh, make sure we get rid of any lack of fusion. And we're just gonna give a nice little path for the uh, next speed of lay. This could be nothing, but I always, always got taught if there's a little bit of black stuff or like a little bit of stuff left over from grinding, just keep grinding until it's all silver. Aim right on that left side of that plate. Make sure I'm like digging in good. Uh, make sure it's filling up on that left side really good. I'm not really too worried about the right side if it's not filling in properly because I want to put a little grind mark in there and get rid of any imperfections or whatever. And we're just going to keep staying steady. The trick is try to keep far enough back, like on your max side of your uh, stick out. You can look kind of behind your puddle or like getting solid. You know if it's going bad or going good. If you're going too slow, it'll peak up. You can see it how it's, when it's cooling down, the orange will just taper away. And you'll see it like, just like, holy crap, that's, that's humped up, I need to stop. That's the main thing, that's what I've been noticing, what I gotta pay attention to. 
and don't move. Try to stay steady like you're doing TIG the whole time and just keep going all the way up. All right, we got color. See how it's not that ropey? That's why I'm not weaving, because I want to get penetration. I'm trying to keep it nice, steady stringers. Uh, and that's why you don't want to move. See how it like it got a little baby hiccup there? I mean, it looks good. We don't have much buckshot. Sounds like crap, but it look, what, look what it's doing. It looks good. Now I'm just pointing my gun right there the whole time. I'm making sure I'm pushing in on that bevel because I know on this right side, I'm gonna grind right here. If there's any lack of fusion, I'm gonna grind that out and get rid of that. So when I was welding, I thought I was going over here far enough. I mean, it looked like it, like you would look at steel. You're going over there pausing. And I didn't really see it until I started getting up out right here. I was like, oh crap. What gave it away is when I looked behind the puddle, like quite a bit, where it was like, uh, where the orange was going away. I was like, okay, that's not looking good. So I started moving over more and started coming out good. Look how good it was tying in. So how we're gonna fix this, this is what you gotta do out in the field. Take the grinder and grind this all back. We gotta get that, we won't penetrate in there. We gotta open that up to about a quarter inch and make it wide, not a narrow valley, wide. And then it'll look like it never been touched after we welded it. We got good color. I mean, it's gray a little bit, but we still got color. There's no sugaring at all. Just by looking at this, it looks pretty good, actually. I mean, it looks like we didn't mess up earlier. So we're gonna look at this left side first, right here. That's a good, nice tie-in, everything's overlapping by half we're pretty good no lack of fusion i'm noticing no overlap on the right side i know i messed up a little bit but it's not a big deal at all i ate away my edge that happens uh, you just gotta pay attention or draw a line because that's basically always your guideline to run your cat bead but hey i'll just grind a little line there and that'll be my guide no big deal all right we're gonna let it cool for a couple minutes then we're going to start on this left side all right so i'm going to do these fill passes really quick um Every time I'm turning up my wire feed speed a little bit, like by five or 10, but I'm paying attention to that puddle the whole time, especially behind it where, it's, where it's the orange is starting to taper away. Like you'll see it start going black in your helmet. And I'm just watching that puddle and make sure I'm tying it on both sides. You kind of got to exaggerate on your, on, your, on your toes, like go over a little bit further than you usually do when you're doing flux core or uh, 7018, because it kind of fools you. You think you're going over there far enough, but it's not. So you want to go make sure you're going over there. Don't do a massive amount of weaves and do short step. It'll show big time if you're going to do a little weave. I notice this builds up a lot, a lot, a lot. So that's why I'm kind of grinding it. And plus it saves me on a lack of fusion if I have any lack of fusion. We just got done cleaning this bead here, this middle one. It's kind of high right here. So I'm going to just say that's my start of my cap. It's all right if you have, you know, I mean, your beads out of sequence out of sequence, it's not gonna hurt it. Uh, it happens. Um, so we're gonna leave that one alone. So I grind a groove right here, and I grind it deep because I know the, uh, the middle crown's up really high. So we're gonna let that cool, and we're just gonna run one up, all the way up. I'm gonna turn my wire feed speed down a little bit. Then the last one's gonna be right here. We're gonna let it cool and grind a groove in it, and we're gonna call it. So I'm gonna be running at 23 volts, and I'm gonna lower it down to like 235 uh, and see how it feels. I'm going to finish my whole cap out like that. The weld looks pretty good. We got good tie-ins right here. I mean, you can tell there's no lack of fusion, no overlap. I'm pretty happy with this. This almost reminds me of stick vertical a little bit. The only thing I don't like is this plate's bowed. Uh, I knew better, I should have done it. I should have put a brace behind here or put it in that jig like I did on that last video, but I was going for comfort because I was nervous on this test, but hey, we're still gonna cut this and bend it and, and we're gonna see if it holds up. So let's do it. All right, we got these all bowed and I mean, not bowed. <laughs> well, they are bowed, but anyways, we got these all clean up. Uh, make sure you, if you're hand lace, when you're like taking it from a student or handling yourself, always wear your gloves, especially your MCR. Don't say that. I was just showing them without the gloves on. <laughs>
have your gloves on and have glasses on and you should actually stand behind something steel in case something happens. Look at that baby. It's like a f***ing, oh, excuse my language. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Root's gonna give me a head start because it's been, it's the face that's so gonna take a lot of abuse because you're bending it the opposite way. Damn, you can hear that lugging down. I hate presses. Go all the way through. That was pretty straight. Came down even on both sides. Jason, nice little press you built. I like it. All right, I'm gonna let you guys have the first look because I don't know what it is. Honestly, ready? What is it? All right, I'm not gonna look until the end. I'm gonna set it face down on the ground. All right, you guys know before me. All right, look straight, camera guy. Pretty even, no, not this way. This way. <laughs> Ooh, scared me. I hate, I hate pressing shit. Oh, it's, oh, snapped. That one snapped. That's why it snapped, because it went the wrong way, it bowed. It looks like it bit in. Yeah, just all, I think that's all it was. It went through one side. It, you know what I mean? It went that way, then it went that way. So the root looks all right. It looks pretty good. Nothing even busted, not even one little knickknack, but we need to redo this test and need to uh, do it. I don't think my settings are that far off. I mean, it reminded me of flex core. I kind of went back to how I did stainless steel flex core vertical and overhead. It was actually duplex I ran, 2201. And I just went off that noise, basically. I mean, it sounds like crap, but when you look at it, it looks okay. I mean, I was running in the mid-range of them amps that uh, Bowler recommended in their uh, tech sheet. So uh, we're gonna re I'm gonna redo this and uh, put it up in the triangle engineering jig completely right. I'm gonna wet it up really quick. Camera guy is gonna put a camera right on me the whole time. He's gonna like kind of fast forward it really quick. So you guys know I'm not cheating or anything. I wanna give a big shout out to MCR. I appreciate uh, sending these gloves, these Mustangs. Check them out guys. But we call these the mullet gloves. TIG up front, that's my favorite TIG. And MIG in the back. If you guys ever did stainless steel welding, you know the BBs, they mess you up when they land on you. Didn't feel nothing in my hand. I mean, these are great gloves. I uh, appreciate it guys. Thanks for sending them out. These are about three or four months old and they still look good. Thanks guys, appreciate it. Uh, see you guys next time on Man Cub. Learning is key. Make sure you guys stay healthy and stay safe. It's all about making sure that plate don't bend. Hope you guys learned from this. This basically t told me, or and will tell you, that uh, you gotta keep it straight, tack something to it, keep it supported. Uh, that's the main thing. If it goes out of the way, you've seen what happened, it broke. So uh, make sure you guys always keep it straight.